Little over a year ago, I gave a streaming set-top cube a perfect score, 10 out of 10, which seemed like a gutsy move at the time. Now, it just seems like it was the right call. I am, of course, talking about the Amazon Fire TV Cube. This would be its replacement, the Amazon Fire TV Cube, second generation, or parentheses 2019, however you want to call it. Not a whole lot has changed. It's way more powerful, supposed to be a lot more speedy. And of course, what's really special about this thing is that it can control your entire home theater using the power of a, well, I'm not gonna say her name, you know who. So let's open this up, check it out, and see how much better it is. Do you care about product packaging? Because I do, I kind of like it. I geek out over it. It's the whole kid at Christmas thing, I think, for me. Anyway, let's uh, get into this guy. Uh, yes, anything shiny black and wrapped in plastic is good times for me. So there's the cube. Uh, looks just like it did last year. No big changes there. Uh, and then we're gonna find a bunch of accessories in here, no doubt. Uh, here is an IR blaster. Um, this is actually gonna reach components of your system for control that the uh, cube can't control with its own IR blaster. It's got one built right in. Uh, power. No, not yet. This is the Ethernet adapter. Uh, so this takes up the mini USB, uh, excuse me, micro USB, gives you another micro USB and uh, an Ethernet connection. People ask, why don't you just build that into the box? And I say, because the box is tiny. It's a cube. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room for stuff in there. Power adapter. Uh, this looks like it should be long enough for most installations. We'll find out. If not, I guess you're looking at a uh, extender cable. Uh, and then we should have a remote in here somewhere. Yes. Pull the rest of this out. Excuse me. Loose batteries flying around. Amazon branded, of course. Uh, and then a little product literature that I don't need. And of course, the you know who empowered remote. Now let's unwrap this guy and take a closer look here. It's so crinkly. Oh, and there's more. satisfying uh, nice shiny black cube ready for my fingerprints and let's not completely throw this away there's important information on this little sheet folks uh, about where you want to place the cube basically you want to give it a nice line of sight to all of your gear and not bury it in a cabinet and then we'll take a closer look up top basic control buttons that you probably don't need to use to be honest with you because between the remote and your voice control uh, everything's covered uh, you can see the array of microphones on the top. That's what allows far field voice. On the back, micro USB, as I pointed out, power port, HDMI port, no HDMI cable included. So be sure to get yourself one if you don't have one already. And then the, uh, actually this is the infrared port, not the power port, which is here, uh, in order to connect that IR blaster. Otherwise, simple. Setting up the Fire TV Cube is pretty easy. It just takes a while. Actually, we ran into a little problem when we started where it kind of got hung up. I had to power cycle it, but after that, it ran smoothly. It just takes a while. So aside from just getting it connected to your TV, uh, you want to control your other components, and that's where you're going to have to go into managing devices and uh, adding different components. Now, it starts looking for an AV receiver right away. You don't have to plug this into your AV receiver, but Fire TV Cube kind of assumes that you are. There are workarounds though, just tell it that it's not connected. Uh, keep going with all the voice prompts. Uh, add a Blu-ray player manually, add your uh, cable box manually. Eventually you will get there and the device will be able to control all of it. Okay, so we're all set up now. Uh, we left the Fire TV Cube out as recommended because really that's the best way for you to use voice control without having to necessarily press the voice button on the remote. But you could bury it with your other equipment as long as that IR blaster can reach all of it. Otherwise, you're gonna have trouble controlling everything. So the Fire TV Cube is supposed to be faster and uh, it definitely is snappy. I can get through all of these app selections really, really quickly. It immediately responds to my inputs, uh, a lot like the Roku Ultra does which I like, so fast is good. I also noticed that it presents its on-screen display in Dolby Vision. It's 1080p, it's not 4K, but it is in Dolby Vision, which is kind of nice. Leaps off the screen a little bit. That is, of course, if you have a TV that supports Dolby Vision. Otherwise, everything appears to be more or less the same, which is great. I can still control things. So let me give you an example, and don't worry, we're gonna bleep out the A word when I say this. So I'm on uh, the home screen now, and we'll try this. Oh. <laughs> 
Tune to ESPN. Tuning to ESPN on cable. It knows which channel ESPN is through my cable provider uh, based on my location and the name of the cable provider. So I can do this for pretty much any channel I want. Tune to Nickelodeon. I Tuning to Nickelodeon on cable. I don't know what number that is, but it's gonna find it for me. And uh, it's going to default to the HD version when it can. I found. Uh, now let's say I want to switch to something on Netflix, even though they would prefer I chose Amazon Prime. Play season three, episode two on Stranger Things. Getting Stranger Things from Netflix. I kind of botched that voice command, but uh, it's going to figure it out anyway, which is one of the great things about this particular voice assistant. Um, and what I found is you can actually control playback of Netflix through this device now. That's not something that you could have done before. That's an update to the Fire TV ecosystem. So um, yeah, a lot of voice control, all of it for your entire system. So if you wanna switch to Blu-ray, you can do that. Switch to Blu-ray. Now it's not gonna start playing the Blu-ray for you. Uh, device control doesn't seem to be there just yet, but at least it's gonna get you to that input and then you're a quick play button away from watching your movie. No, I'm hard pressed to come up with a real gripe here. I guess my one complaint, and it's a small one, is that I wish it had an analog audio output. Just a little headphone jack on the back. It would make it really easy to connect it to a speaker system that doesn't have HDMI enabled. And that way you could listen to music and get it through a nice speaker system without necessarily having to use HDMI. Other than that, I think it's a pretty stinking great device. For 130 bucks, you got a lot of control. And of course you get access to everything that you could possibly want to stream. Amazon still puts its content up front first, but when you do searches, it'll show you where you can watch the show you want to watch and how much that's going to be, even if it's for free on another service. So that's a big move for Amazon, which I very much appreciate. Otherwise, I think it's for power users, but it's definitely a powerful device and well worth getting if you want to simplify your home entertainment center control. Thanks as always for watching everyone. You guys know I'm a Roku fan. In fact, I've got the review for the Ultra right up there. What do you think about the Cube? Hit me down in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I'm coming out with a new video. And as always, visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews.